there are over 163 million registered accounts across all freelancing platforms. Crazy numbers, I know, but how do we actually compete on freelance platforms? Today, I have tried and perfected strategies to actually make serious money on freelance platforms. The important thing to competing these days on freelance platforms is to stand out. Now we're looking at Fiverr here and we're browsing the logo design freelancers. Notice here how this person is advertising a modern and minimal logo. That's quite a niche type of logo. Then moving down even further, somebody is selling a logo aimed at DJs. You can't really get more niche than that to be honest. And look at the number of sales they have, over 1k. The trick is to find a niche within a niche and then kind of market your skills in a very unique way within that kind of niche sector. It's one thing being an illustrator, that's a skill, but being a top manga or anime star illustrator is a mastery that is highly, highly niche. Also consider the thumbnail of your projects that they should stand out to, the profile picture on your accounts and the title of your projects especially. They all need to be niche and they all need to stand out. Now here's a quick bonus tip about your profile. Wherever possible on these freelancing platforms, try and attach a short video about yourself and your work. This adds that kind of human element that makes you more relatable to potential clients. Try and style this video to your profile and your branding too. Okay, so you need to be niche and you need to stand out. Great. But what about some of the more technical tips that few people actually know about and implement into their freelancing strategy? Now, into your strategy, you need to work in custom proposals. If your proposal is a template and it's cold, then it's easily going to just be seen as that, cold and unoriginal. When reading a job posting, see what the client wants and what phrases the potential client uses. You then use this information to create a custom proposal, something tailored to the customer's needs and the problems they need solving. Now you might notice that on some freelance websites, it shows you how long it typically takes for a freelancer to respond to a message. I'm somebody who hires people on freelance platforms on a regular basis. And I often use this to gauge whether or not a person is even worth contacting in the first place, because firstly, my time is precious. And secondly, it shows how professional and available they actually are. There are two main choices when it comes to actually finding work on freelance platforms as a graphic designer. One, you reply to potential clients posting their jobs or two, they contact you via specific projects that you have ready to go. On people per hour, they used to call these hourlies, but they're now called offers. On Upwork, they're called projects. The thing with these is that they appeal to the type of client who just wants to look around people's profile and then just buy a service right away. But here's the key secret to gaining money and those clients when it comes to using these. Make sure the title is appealing, that it stands out and that it appeals to the niche skill where you seem like a master of the thing. Looking back at this dude right here, he's doing things right. Check out these titles. I mean, an unmatched project, attention worthy project, achieve project designing heights. He's really selling and marketing his offers to potential clients, knowing what they want to read and also what to buy. Now, you can either be like 99% of other freelancers and see saturation and competition as a way to become even more isolated, or you can choose to become more social. The hard truth that very few people understand is that the more you work with or interact with the people who you see as competition, the more you will win. Networking opens up doors and opportunities that not only were closed beforehand, but which you didn't even know existed in the first place. Some people have access to sectors of business and industry that you could only dream of. And trust me on this, it's really, really important. So try and get busy on the social side of these freelancing platforms and make real connections. most freelance designers out there aren't ready for the freelancing world. As a freelancer, there are so many hidden traps and problems that most people don't consider until it's too late. A quote by IBIS World in 2020 states that freelance graphic designers account for approximately 90% of the total industry participation. The problem is that most of these designers have only a vague idea of what the freelance experience should consist of and how to do it properly. Knowing when to start your own freelance career, or if it's even for you in the first place, 
can be the first problem. I've been doing this for nearly 15 years now, and I would say for the first two to three years, I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm surprised I've got this far as a freelancer, and that's because I was making a lot of the mistakes you're gonna hear about right now. For a start, you have to get used to being jack of all trades. Just think about it for a second. A typical graphic design agency will have someone to deal with communications, someone else to do the admin work, keep track of finances, and other people to work on marketing, social media, to track the business health, and so on. As a freelancer, you accept all of these roles and more all on your own back. That's right, it's completely down to you. Of course, it is possible with practice, self-education and persistence, but not only is it tough, it's essential to success. There are a bunch of apps and resources that you can use to help with these points, so don't be shy with Google searching for these things. The next thing a lot of designers don't think about is taxes. Most people out there are legally required to pay taxes on their earnings. And when you work at a design studio or agency, it's often calculated all for you and then processed without much worry for your end. But as a freelancer, it's a completely different story. It's a very tough pill to swallow to see you know, a big percentage of your earnings fly out of the window every single year. Not only do you need to pay the taxes, but you need to do it properly. There are so many parts of the tax world that you need to seek advice on from a financial advisor. For example, up until this year, I was paying tax as a sole trader, and I wish I had launched a registered company as they typically pay less taxes than sole traders. I didn't know that before, of course, but suffice to say, my last tax bill was £24,000, which is roughly about $30,000, and that's for a single year. So your taxes are a big thing when it comes to freelancing. Another hard truth about being a freelancer is being a victim to the skewed vision syndrome. The skewed mind syndrome is basically when a designer looks at their work and they can't determine if it's good or bad on their own accord. If you're someone who is used to asking everyone else in a design studio for opinions on the design, or getting direct input from other designers, this can be a harsh reality check for those navigating into the freelance world. Some people like myself prefer working alone, but even the most introverted of lone wolves can actually benefit from a team input on a design or project. As a freelancer, you need to learn the skill of having a very objective view of your work. This is to say you don't have any emotion about it and can be harshly self-critical in a positive way. You really have to trust your own judgment and instincts. Some projects look great one day and the next you might have some reservations. It pays to listen to your clients, see how they react and also respond accordingly. The next hard truth you need to understand about freelance graphic design is based around inspiration. Inspiration is something we all need from time to time. Inspiration to become energetic or enthusiastic about a project. Inspiration for a new design direction. Inspiration to simply keep going. I found that now I work for myself, I do have more drive and more resilience to keep myself going than working for a business or a company that's not owned by myself. It feels a lot more rewarding to know that the time and energy I'm putting into something is all for myself, and not somebody else's company. However, again, some people will find this quite daunting. It depends on the person. Next, it's security or the lack of security. Many people fail to consider this when they step into the freelancing world. This might be the biggest deal breaker for most people when it comes to freelancing. As a freelance designer, you have no company pension, no paid holidays, no sick leave, no health insurance from a company, and no bonuses. Essentially, you're left to the open world and the potential risks there. It's very wise to save money every single month to go towards your future as a kind of private pension. Furthermore, just saving money for a rainy day is very clever because it is gonna rain at some point. You need to ask yourself if you're okay with this lack of security, can you afford to not get paid for X amount of days or weeks due to an illness? These are all real things that you need to consider. Freelancing has a lot of perks and it does bring a lot of freedom, and you can, after all, end up making more money than you would at any kind of company or agency, if you play your cards right, of course. And I still suggest that most, if not all designers, should start working as some part of team in an agency or in-house position. This is just to get an experience and feel for the industry, you will no doubt learn valuable habits and knowledge and insights when working for an actual company. Freelancing simply isn't something that every designer will be mentally dispositioned towards. 
it will not suit some mentality and some habits that people have. And that's something you need to ask yourself and really, really consider. So there's the hard truth about freelance graphic design. And I hope you learned something today and maybe you are considering becoming a freelance designer. Let me know in the comments and also drop a like on this video if you found it useful. And until next time, design your future today. Peace.